Hey everybody, this video was filmed before COVID-19 became a pandemic and social distancing was a thing. Right now we are not traveling and are following the current government guidelines for self-isolation at our home in western New York. Oh, this won't plug in. I need the adapter. Diane, will you give me the dog bone? What's a dog bone? I have no idea what a dog bone is. There's a lot of different names for things and in this video we're going to show you what some of them are and we're going to explain to you what a dog bone is right after we run that introduction footage. So stay tuned. So this is the dog bone that you use to connect from 30 amp to 15 amp. And what do I mean by a dog bone? And here's the two dogs, which are Monty's getting upset. They want the bone. Right. So this is what they want. So we'll make them sit for the dog bone. You gonna sit? Sit. Zephyr, set. Okay, there you go. Hi everybody, welcome back to Zephyr Travels. If this is your first time, think about subscribing and so you can follow along on our journey. And today we are looking at all some of the different terminologies that are used in RVing that are different. And we want to kind of share with you some of the different terms and what they mean and have some fun with it. So. Let's get started. So Diane, do you know what a dinghy is? Uh, you want me to read it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do that. All right. So we have come up with a list of terms relating to RVing, which we're going to share with you. The first one, like Randy said, is a dinghy. The dinghy is the vehicle towed behind an RV. And so, a lot of times you see um, a vehicle being towed and the front wheels are on something and that's called a dolly and it's not like dolly parton. A dolly is used when you're towing a vehicle that um, you can't tow all four wheels on the ground so you have to have the drive wheels up off the ground so like a front wheel drive car you'd put it on a dolly so that it can be towed and the front wheels would not spin. Kind of in keeping with this theme about towing there's also a towed a toad is the automobile being pulled behind a motorhome. Yeah, not not that little uh, froggy thing that bounces around in the pond. Here. So, so this one's my favorite, a hula skirt. Yes, I I had never heard the term before, but a hula skirt is the skirt placed on the back bumper of a motorhome to stop the debris that is thrown from the rear wheels from damaging vehicles behind the motorhome. Right, so you see these on a lot of motorhomes. Sometimes you see them on tow vehicles. It's a big long mud flap that goes all the way across the back, just under the back bumper. Sometimes they look like they're made out of skirt material and sometimes they're just flat mud flap material, but it prevents the rear wheels of the motorhome or tow vehicle from kicking up stones and stuff on whatever is being towed behind. In most cases, it would be a, uh, a dinghy or, or a tow car. The next term we're gonna uh, talk about is Fiver for five dash er, which refers to a fifth wheel trailer. Yeah, I, had, I hadn't really heard this one. I mean, it makes sense being a fifth wheel, the five and everything, but I never really knew that they called them fivers or fiver. Um, that's kind of interesting. Have you ever heard of a schoolie? No, I have never heard of a schoolie. So a schoolie is a school bus conversion into a camper, and that's very popular. There's a whole group of people who call themselves schoolies and, and you know get together with rallies and such. Okay. And then the TT? The TT is the travel trailer. Sometimes used for a thousand trails. Right. Sometimes people refer to a thousand trails as TT, but you know most of the time it's a travel trailer. Like this guy here. The next term we're gonna review is a stinky slinky. And that's you know kind of a odd term, but it's a uh, term used for your sewer hose. 
Yeah, you've seen the, the RV sewer hoses and they they kind of look like a slinky and obviously they're stinky. Now, you wouldn't think of donuts when you're thinking of your sewer hose, but there is a donut. Right, the donut is a rubber ring that seals the dump hose in the campsite sewer connection so that gases and odors do not escape. So, so this is the donut. Kind of looks like a donut. It's got a hole in the middle, but you wouldn't want to eat it. And, and this, you would, some campgrounds require you to use this when you plug in to the sewer connection because they don't have a threaded connection. It's probably typically older campgrounds and you need something to kind of make the seal your connection there so you don't get odors out. So you'd use this donut. I don't think we've ever used ours. Hence, oh. I wouldn't be touching it. Well, that's true. <laughs> I'll wash my hands anyways, but this is a donut. Right. Don't want to eat it. The next term we're going to um, go over is the blue boy. And the blue boy is the portable wheeled plastic tote used to transport sewage from our, from your RV waste tank to the dump station. Yeah, so blue boy is like, kind of like a big portable tank or cart um, that you can connect your stinky slinky into. And you can dump your... Um, gray and black tanks and then you walk it over to the dump station so like if you're at a campground that doesn't have full hulk ups and you need to empty your tanks you know and you don't want to have to hook up your trailer or your rv and move it all over to the dump station a lot of people will have a blue boy and they use that okay so the next um term we want to review is blm which is bureau of land management and these are public lands owned by us where you can find free or very cheap camping. Right. And so that's a lot of those BLM land is more out west. Now we're starting to find some of these in Florida. Um, there is um, water management land and those you can camp on. And we're actually be camping at one of those coming up in a few days. And along with that, there's another term, COE which is Corps of Engineers. And they have nice campgrounds usually near a lake or reservoir. Yeah, again, this is more government property, and, but these are campgrounds. And they are similar to a national park, but they're not a national park. Um, they, you can reserve these through the same website that you do national parks, and your national parks pass will work at these. It's, they're great values because uh, you know we're camping at the one with the national parks pass. It's going to cost us $14 per night. So it's a real good value, and that's with water and electric hookup. You probably hear boondocking tossed around quite a bit, and what is that? That is any time that you are camping without hookups, and it's typically free camping. Um, so if you're on these public lands that don't charge, they, you, that would be considered boondocking. And so it kind of goes to, you're out in the boondocks and that's how you're camping. There's also dry camping, which is camping without hookups. Can be long-term boondocking, like Randy just went over, or overnight parking in a lot. Yep, and dry camping, you know, can some, campgrounds have dry camping areas. Now, a lot of state parks have an overflow area that would be dry camping and you get no hookups but they are campsites and you are going to pay for that. You just, mooch this, docking. This is a fun term. It's uh, similar to boondocking but more like couch surfing where you park yourself in a friend's driveway or yard and mooch off their water and electric. Here's another fun term, wally docking, which means you stay overnight in a Walmart parking lot. Yeah, we've done that, and, and you'll see that a lot of times where, you know, people will pull into a Walmart when you're traveling and you don't really want to uh, get a campsite for the night because you're just going to leave very early the next morning. And Here's another term for overnight parking is O slash N parking, which is overnight parking, parking, usually in parking lots or such as Walmarts, restaurants, casinos, rest areas, truck stops. And we have done this, uh, we did on this trip down, we stayed at a Bass Pro Shop. Yep. And also at a couple rest stops. Another term for RVing is full timers. These are RV, RVers who live and travel in their RV year round, usually without a sticks and bricks home anywhere. Yeah, and so we have some friends that are full-time RVers and they have a YouTube channel, Embracing Detours, 
and they live in their RV full time and travel the country. And it's it's intriguing idea to do. It's something we've given some thought to and, and may do in the future. Mm -hmm. But this next term kind of covers what we are. Right. This is half timers, RVers who live and travel in their RV part time, usually over half of the year, and still have a sticks and bricks home somewhere, which we do. Yep. So. Yep, we do this probably close to six months of the year, and then the other time we spend at our home. Okay, the next term is snowbird. And a snowbird is RVers that typically lives in their sticks and bricks home during the summer season, which we do, and travels to warm locations in the winter. Yep, and, and a snowbird typically goes to one place. Um, my parents were snowbirds and, and they had a place in Arizona that they went to every year and they stayed at that same place throughout the full winter. You know, a lot of people go to Florida as a snowbird and they have a, a place that they stay in that area and they don't move around a lot. Winter in Florida, summer in New York type of thing. And a weekend warrior is an RVer who RVs on the weekends. Yep, and a lot of you are weekend warriors, and you know you go to the, the state parks and you use your rig on the weekends with your family and such, and that's a great way to, to get into the lifestyle. Our last term is work amping, and this is, refers to RVers exchanging work for a free campsite, utilities, and possibly a small wage. Yep, so you see these campground hosts at state parks are a lot of times uh, work camp campers doing that in exchange for their lodging. At the so it, it's, a, it's an interesting way to get into this lifestyle and do it for a less cost because if obviously some of these places, if you were to stay here for longer periods of time, could get expensive and being able to work off some of that is a nice way to do it. All right. So I think that's all the terms that we have. We hope you... Uh, learned a little bit from this video and enjoyed it as well yeah those were some interesting names and you know, we saw i saw this article and i and i read through it and you know, knew a lot of these but they're they're just so unique that i thought it would be fun to share mm -hmm. with them right and everybody. especially if you're new to rv that's right so we hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give us a thumbs up leave us a comment and tell us something some rv term that we didn't talk about We'd love to hear from you and, and hear what you think. And what should they do to... If you are interested in following along with us, please subscribe to our channel. That's right. And ring the bell so you get notifications. We post new videos every Wednesday. And we'd love to have you follow along on our journey. Right. So until the next time, we will see you guys down the road. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye.